Shalom. Welcome to the Messianic Hour with Rabbi Scott Sekulow. The Messianic Hour is a program designed to give you insight into the Jewish roots of your faith. Rabbi Scott is also here to answer your questions and help you gain a deeper understanding of Bible prophecy. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Scott Sekulow. Shalom and welcome to another edition of the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. And we're glad you're with us, listening on the radio and watching via the Internet as well. You can uh, catch our shows. We're now recording them via the cameras, and you can watch them on YouTube. Uh, you can also watch them at our website, RabbiScott.com. You can also listen to previous shows at RabbiScott.com and this show anytime. So check out our website for more information and view in. And let your friends know, too. You know, Judy, I did a, uh, a interview on a Christian TV station a couple weeks ago, and I put part of it. i got to put the other half of the thing on there on Hanukkah with everything going on with uh, traveling on that. I was only able to get the first uh, segment on. And we had almost over 300 people watch it. Many of them put it on their, uh, their Facebook accounts, and we encourage you to do that. Get the word out. Let your friends know it's a great way of... Uh, spreading this show by uh, adding us to your Facebook and other events like that. So let people know about the show. And they can go and look for the Messianic Hour and join that group. We're ha- we've had That's to right. restart it. So we would love for you to join the Messianic Hour group. And we post there on occasions, trying to do it more often. That is one of those That things. is our goal for this year. 2012. Yes, we're closing out 2011, starting 2012. And, you know, everybody likes to make New Year's resolutions. That's right. And, and we're going to keep them, though. Right. But you know what I really think we need to do is instead of trying to make resolutions is really see where God has us in our life now, the breakthroughs that he's provided, the doors that he's opened, and concentrate on those. And Judy, you know, speaking about that, we're right now looking and we need the help of our listening audience. A lot of people listen, but we don't, you know, we're not one that pushes for donations and, uh, you know, gives out all these things to get you know we, we try to give everything away for free you can download all our shows if you sign up for our newsletter you get a free book we're not one to nickel and dime you to death but we actually do need some support because we're given an opportunity to go on satellite radio which will give us a even larger national audience but we need you to support so if you've been blessed by this ministry i want to encourage you go to our website rabbiscott.com you can sign up and support this show and let us know we want to hear from you too we get great letters about people but we really need it. We want to take it to the next level, and we need you to stand with us as we share our love of Messiah and his Jewish roots. And what a great way to do this as we have the end of the year coming right up. And another opportunity is we're going back to Israel in 2012. Right. We're going May 28th through, through the June, June 7th. 7th. Kind of forgot those dates a little bit there, but we would love for you to join us on that trip. It's going to be a wonderful trip. A lot of things happening, a lot of extra things that we put in that we don't necessarily promote, but there's evening events that aren't on the schedule. But just to really give you that full full view of right. Israel. You're going to actually speak with believers, not only believers in the land, but Orthodox religious Jews in the land, too. So you're really going to get a great uh, opportunity to understand what's going on, really see it. It's not just sightseeing. It's reaching out. You can go online. We already have the uh, information there. You can sign up. So go check that out again, RabbiScott.com. Israel, May 28th through June 7th. Go check that out. We'll be back right after this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm Judy Seculo. I'm glad that you're with us today as we go through Acts 14. We finished out 13. We're on 14. And Rabbi, we see that Rabbi Shaul and Barnabas have made it to a new city, and they're in Iconium now. Yeah, all these names are very Greek. They could have easy names, but they don't. And it's interesting, just like what we see happening in Acts 13, we see here in 14 that, again, as the custom was of Yeshua, we see them going to the synagogues. But things happen a little different here uh, in this area. Again, they have the, the problems of... Uh, them reaching out, and then the Jewish community that is not uh, that are not believers come against them. You know, it's amazing. Two thousand years later, nothing's changed. We see these same events happening even today, 
And, uh, you know, Judy, the work I've done with uh, Jonathan Burnus with uh, then Hero Israel Ministries, now Jewish Voice Ministries, with the outreaches we did to the former Soviet Union, you and I both went on. We uh, worked in the offices and uh, doing security and outreaches, and actually I spoke at several of them as well. It's amazing, though, to see. Times might change, but everything else stays the same in that, and we see that happen here as well. Well, I think one thing that's so interesting, and, and we do this when we're going through the different chapters, we try to show you how it ties in with the Torah and the half Torah. So it shows that it's this one tapestry, but when we're really getting into the writings of Paul and the adventures of Paul, so to speak, we really start to be able to pull in from his other writings. Right. And again, sees how it's really kind of all interwoven. And on this one, we actually see from Galatians 3, 5, he asked them, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the Torah or because you believe what you have heard? Right. Because they heard and they saw miracles. But where was their belief really coming from? Right, and that's where we see here, and what we understand also, you know, as, as we see here, the, 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 those in the synagogues that were fighting them, when they then left, they actually got, you know, they tried to lynch them and stone them, the, the apostles, mm -hmm. and they had to, to escape, and now they escape, and they go to another area, and even in, uh, in Timothy, he says, you, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, suffering, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, in Icodium, and Lystra, the persecution I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all, of, uh, from all of them. So we see, again, not only in Galatians, but in Timothy as well that he mentions it. And we see that they move from Iconium and go to Lystra, which is a Roman colony. But one of the interesting things that they kind of have an issue with here is there's a language barrier and don't we have that even today right. when we're trying to witness and you know we're using words that build up walls or give false impressions and here Rabbi Shaul is having the same thing. Not only that this is a community that's really predominantly Greek. Matter of fact we ha don't have any even proof that there's a synagogue there that's one of the reasons why they don't go to the synagogue. There most likely wasn't one there so they went to the pretty much the town square and they started preaching and people get this different understanding and that's one thing we have to be careful when and it, this is a, a for the G gentiles out there when you're talking to a jewish person you got to speak the same language you can't just assume they know what you're talking about because as paul and barnabas find out you might be saying one thing they're thinking another they're next hearing thing, something they're else. hearing another they're seeing these miracles and the next thing you know these guys are god zeus you know these Greek gods, here they are, and Paul, they just didn't get it. Well, there's a, there's a story in Greek philosophy about Zeus and Hermes, who was in disguise, and they were traveling. And so this being kind of a pagan city and a Greek city, the villagers there would have been familiar with this. So here comes two travelers, did a miracle, healed a crippled person, right. and now they're thinking, Wow, this is Zeus and Hermes in the flesh. They've come to us. And because Paul and Barnabas didn't understand the language, they didn't understand what the people were saying until this old priest showed up trying to slaughter an ox to <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here they, you know, you, you can imagine. You have to understand, you know, we call Paul, but Saul, that was his Hebrew name. It never was changed. They, they just didn't have a, a, a Greek name for Saul, so we have him as Paul here. You know, he's thinking everyone understands what he's doing. And next thing you know, they're coming to sacrifice animals to him. He's a god. And both of them, what do they do? They tear their clothes and say, you guys, you missed the point. But you also can imagine how they must felt because they never wanted to take the impression that they were being in, in, in equal to or in place of God. And so they really had some explaining to do. And really try to get these guys straight, which really still didn't even help that much. Well, we see here that Rabbi Sha Shaul actually had to kind of explain the whole thing of creation, God, monotheism, belief in Yeshua, and 100 words or less. Uh, yeah. But, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know of a rabbi who could really do that. And, and you know, he, he does this to show them really that God, you know, gives us the, the nature and all that that goes in because he had to explain it on a level that they could understand. And he's sharing with them. And yet, uh, you know, we see him really kind of let his heart, you know, his trying to give this understanding of it 
But man, he was feeling really bad. He he just they didn't get it, and you can imagine here's this bold zealot, religious zealot, who wants to share this faith, and then the people are hearing the total opposite of what he was really preaching. And you know, there's really nothing worse than kind of a crowd of religious zealots who've gotten their you know their excitement up to be cast down and disappointed and. You know, when the people really realize that they're just out regular human beings just like them, they really want to go after them. Well, they do. And then the Jewish community comes over. They're following uh, Saul and Barnabas. They then easily get the people behind because, you know, what they're doing. And the next thing you know, they're, they're stoning them not because of, of the Jewish tradition. They're just stoning them because they, they're not the gods who they thought they were. And so here they stone them. They go after Saul. Leaving him for dead. They thought they killed him. He's all, you can imagine he must be all bloodied. And, uh, matter of fact, even the scriptures later on tell us that he, was all, he had, had scars from this. But what happens? The believers, being that those who were from the city or those who went with them, uh, gather around him. They're watching. Next thing you know, Saul gets up and goes right back into the city <laughs> and continues to preach the gospel. So you have to give them what we call in Yiddish chutzpah for being able to share the gospel and not worry about what man tries to do. What man tried for bad, God will turn for good. And we see that take place here. But then we know that they uh, they leave that area. And they where do they go to next, Judy? They go to Derby, which is about 80 miles. But this was finally a trip that's really worth the effort. And it says that they won a large number of disciples over. And what I think is interesting is instead of going back to Taurus, Tarsus, where... Right, which was right around the corner from where basically where he was it made a natural circle. Yeah, which was Rabbi Shaul's hometown. You really see Paul's heart. But I, I personally, what I believe, you see Paul's heart that he goes back the way he came. He wants to go back and check up on these new believers, right. these followers. He's really got this heart for them. So he's making this, and this wasn't an easy trek. This was very arduous. It was mountains, and, you know, there were bandits, as we've talked about before. Right. But he goes back to all of these areas to check up on the believers, and we actually see that he's he's encouraging them to remain steadfast, but we actually see the first example of where they're really starting to set up kind of a structure. Well, basically, remember, when they... When he left them, they were still parts of the synagogues in those areas that were the, the Jewish communities. But we still saw that strife going on. So he basically now sets up elders over them. Now, how many elders would have been traditionally have had three elders? That makes up what's called your bet din, or the pretty much the leadership of judgment. Those who would be the ones who would make sure uh, when to make that the group's doing it according to halakha, Jewish traditions and customs and law. And they would be the judges over them, and here they would be to literally lead the congregation. And But they'd also be providing teaching right. to them also. And they would, by having three, you've got where they shoulder the burden together. And by having that plurality of leadership, you don't have just one person who is going to, you know, possibly be over them all and then putting out false doctrine. It kind of avoids the pitfalls of power right and then we see at the end of the chapter that peter is going to be rejoining uh them and we know from galatians that there's a little spat going on because you know it says when peter came to antioch uh, i opposed him this is shaul talking to his face because he was clearly in the wrong because certain men came from james he uh uh used to eat with the gentiles but when they arrived he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because they were, he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcised group. The other Jews joined him in, in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw what they, uh, that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter from, in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you, that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? And that's something that we have to understand, and we'll see later on, is he's not dealing with them uh, when he's saying e e being like the Gentiles. Not like he's eating like them, but the fact that he wouldn't eat with them a following Jewish tradition, not the Word of God. 
and we'll be back right after this break. Stay tuned. 